सो हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम बैक माई नेम इज इफ्तार खान एंड नाउ विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद अ न्यू कोर्स नोन एज द ओवर व्यू ऑफ एनिमल क्लासिफिकेशन सो इन माई टाइम इट यूज टू बी द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट ऑफ ऑल द चैप्टर्स टू मच क्रामिंग टू मच लर्निंग सो वट आई डू इज आई ट्राई टू मेक इट सिंपल ट्राई टू मेक इट अंडरस्टैंडेबल सो दैट यू कैन हैव इट ईजीली so you can gulp it in gulp it in easily you still have to cram a lot of things but still let me see how how i can help you so the topic of the lesson is the first lesson that is the basis of classification the first part of basis of classification so in brief about me i am currently in 6th semester in aims and rest of it you know i got 10th rank in aims 2013 57th rank in neat and you can follow me at www.anacademy.in/user/iftikharkhan so let's get started so basically in this lesson i'll tell you about few terms that we'll be using frequently in the upcoming lessons so these are the basis of classification the basics of the animal classification so i'll introduce you with it so firstly then we'll describe the level of organization it's basically how is the animal organized what is the structure that is helping in the in the formation and also in the functioning of the organism so there are various levels of organization so firstly firstly the basic level of organization in multicellular organisms is the cellular level of organization what do we mean by the cellular level of organization is that the cells are arranged in loose aggregates it means tissues are not formed cells are the structures which help in the structural and the functional being of the organism and the example of this is porifera porifera basically includes all the sponges so these are commonly known as sponges then the next we have is the tissue level of organization the tissue level of organization basically has the same function everything is fine but the cells are arranged in the form of tissue so the cells they are arranged in the form of tissues and the for and the example of these are cylindrates so cylindrates or the nadarians are basically the group that broadly till the time i acquaint you with the class they consist of jelly bean and other polyps and uh, basically corals these are the part of the cylindrates then we have the organ level so just the same thing the tissues here are now organized in the form of an organ so the example for this is platyhelminths platyhelminths basically the flat worms the tape worm so we'll discuss more about this just know these terms right now okay then we have the organ system level of organization so what do we mean by the organ system level of organization so we like in the human beings we have various organ systems like the excretory system the digestive system the reproductive system and so on and so forth so these are the various organ system in which a group of organ work in coordination with each with each other so that they can form a particular function so what are the examples all the phyla after platyhelminths all the phyla annelids arthropod mollusk echinodermata hemichordata chordata all the phyla which are more advanced than the platyhelminths are involved in organ system level of organization it also includes the nematelminths as well which i have written here so then we come down to the germinal layers so what basically are the germinal layers so the the fetus the initial part of the organism the development of organism 
is basically from embryonic layers different layers in during the embryonic system during the embryonic development the cells are arranged in the form of different layers like they are outside so there basically can be three layers or two layers okay so it can be diploblastic or triploblastic diplo di means two and tri means three so diploblastic organisms have two two germinal layers and triploblastic have three germinal layers okay so what are these layers and what are the organisms that come in come in them so in the diploblastic ones we have only ectoderm and the endoderm so i'll explain you with the diagram so we can see in this diagram that the outermost layer in the diploblastic ones are is the ectoderm and the inner one like this inner one is the endoderm outer one ecto ecto all ecto means outer and endo means inner and this is filled by a jelly or glue like fluid which is known as mesoglea so what is the example of these diploblastic ones so we come back to here so the examples are porifera that are the sponges cilentrates that are basically the jellyfish and etc and we have a different group which is known as comb jellies or tenophores and the triploblastic we have ectoderm the mesoderm and the endoderm and all the phyla from the flat worm that are the platyhelminths to the chordata in included in this triploblastic ones so this is the triploblastic this is the outer one the outer bluer one the ectoderm the middle one the middle the middle one this layer this reddish and the whitish layer is the mesoderm meso means middle and the inner one these are the endoderm so now we come to the symmetry so symmetry is basically the geometrical design of any organism along its axis so what is a symmetrical plane so symmetrical plane is basically any imaginary plane from which if we bisect an organism then it is divided into two equal halves and it should pass by a central and longitudinal axis of body so putting it simply like we have to break or we have to cut an organism through a particular plane and through that plane then organism should be divisible into two equal halves as such which are e which are same in symmetry so i'll take this example so this is an example of bilateral symmetry what does bilateral symmetry mean uh, it means that the organism can only be cut into two equal halves by the mid sagittal plane there is only one plane mid sagittal plane through which we can cut it into two equal halves so then we come to the types of symmetry asymmetry means there is no symmetry as such it it is present in the most of the poriferans and few protozoans what does the meaning of radial symmetry means it means there are infinite planes through which we can cut the organism and the halves will be equal the example can be cilentrates then we have a biradial symmetry which means there are two symmetrical planes instead of one in bilateral which is present in tenophores then I, i will tell you about the pentamerous radial symmetry which has five symmetrical planes example is echinodermata basically the starfish then we have the bilateral symmetry which have platyhelminths till the chordates then we have the body plan which uh, i'll talk about in the next lecture thank you everybody thanks for listening